Big card going to auction. Backyard breaks hit the LeBron logo, man. When we were in Miami, first question, I guess, is, you know, what do you think it's going to sell for? No. I so badly want to say like $176,000. I think a million is a fair number. But I just know that that's not going to happen because people protect downside against that. All right, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to Card Talk. I'm Ryan, joined as always by Tyler and Lou. In today's episode, we are going to talk about some major sports card sales, including the upcoming auction for what might be the most iconic modern day basketball card of all time, the LeBron James 101 Triple Logo Man. I know Lou and Tyler will have thoughts on that. We also want to talk about the Mac Jones One of One Prism Black getting pulled on the first day of Prism release and reportedly mm-hmm. being sold for $100,000. We've got eight Facebook questions we will get into. We've got play of the week, but we are going to start with what's on your mind. Lou, you look ready. You look focused. We will start with you today. Um, I'm actually, per Jay's message, I'm going to change it to a Lou's Poos, actually, my original thing that I was texting about. We're going to run that back this week. That's back. Jay's fired up. Um, What's on my mind today is primarily around the National. I'm excited about the National. Um, I was thinking about like kind of like more events because I think I think we've said we have something plan something pl- in planning stages for the national. I think it's safe to say that. Mm-hmm. So I'm really excited about that, um, and I'm just excited to get together. I spent I spent a lot of time at the show last year. I didn't spend as much time outside the show hanging. I kind of went back to my room, did my own thing, or went to dinner or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm gonna try to get involved in a little more post show things this time around. So I'm pumped about that. I like that. 50 days. Short and sweet. Short and sweet. I mean, I, short and sweet. Classic. Just the loose pools is going to have a professional podcast over here. Just saying. Um, fired up. Yeah. So loose poos will uh, back end of the episode. Okay. Yeah. Not, towards not the end. right now. It'll maybe come up in one of the planned conversations we have here on our rundown. <laughs> All right, Ty. What's on your mind? The Rangers. The Rangers are on my mind. Game four is tonight. Was it 2 1? It's two one. Should be three. One, should be three zero. Oh. Should be. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. You know. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. Big time choke job in the third period. Yeah, it was a tough scene. You go two zero oh on the road to go up three zero. Oh, you know, but look, it's it's called adversity, and we battle through adversity. We we live in adversity. At least the Rangers do. They've come back from three one. They've come down. Come back from three two in series. You know, can't all just be. Roses. Now, the avalanche with a clean sweep on the other side is a tough scene. How about that oh, goalie, huh? He's really good. Who's that? The Oilers goalie. Mike Smith? Well, he had, listen. He had a tough third He He had a tough third period. Did he? Oh, I didn't see any of it. Oh, I yeah. Mean, it was 3-1 when, when I went to bed and I wake up and the abs – yeah, I'm like Av sweep, and I'm like, oh my goodness, they're so good. I think they're it was like so good. I think it was like four goals on five shots in OT and uh, in uh, third period in OT. Yeah, I'm nervous it's going to get late early for anyone but the Avalanche. But um, a lot of time off. I kind of might have called Avalanche Rangers playoffs, but brother, it's did. two to one. Like I'm no, aware. I'm I don't just know. I don't know. know. Right. I'm just saying. I'm just I, really shade of lightning one, you know, three uh, I agree. I'm nervous. I'm shaking in my boots. By the time this comes out, we're going to know. We either have a series 2-2 and we're going back to the garden or it's 3-1. And the lightning are good. And they won back-to-back. And they have a lot God of talent. Some respect. And they have a good goalie. Have the, the lightning won back-to-back cups? Yeah, bro. Yeah, two in a row. I didn't know they won the first. I knew they won the last one. I didn't realize they won back to back. Wow. That's yeah, and it's like hard to knock off the champ. You're the champ until you're not the champ. Fact. But we got a goalie and we got players on the road. It's never easy. Just got to win a game. That's what's on my mind. The New York Rangers and getting ready for the national. Yeah, so that's definitely what's on my mind. Uh, Fifty days until the national. When this episode drops, it'll be 49 days. Under, I mean, under 50 days, right? We've talked about this so much time and time again on this podcast. Hey, 300, we joked about it, 325 days of the National and 250 days of the National. And uh, you just, we just kept slowly counting down, right? Keep recording another episode, more hobby, another episode. Like, and here we are seven weeks away, right? It was 10 weeks away and next week it's going to be six weeks away. And surely, slowly but surely we're, we're getting there. Like Lou said, it's going to happen. 
and I just that is 1000% what my focus is on at the moment. Uh, you know, there's some big releases coming up between now and then prism basketball, flawless football. Uh, you've got some baseball stuff. You're going to have some new 2022 football that we're going to get close to the national. And you're going to hear about, like Lou said, some of these events that are going to happen. We will have, I personally will have uh, trade night details coming very soon. Uh, that will be on Thursday this year. So for sure, lock it in on Thursday night after the show. We'll have more details on that. We're going to do something with Card Talk, right? I know Jay's been working tirelessly on that to get that event locked in. Uh, you know, Panini hopefully brings back the VIP party. I'm sh- Again, there's just a lot of big companies now. And this is the same thing we talked about last year. A lot of these companies are going to have events. There's just going to be so much going on. It's This is, uh, this is going to be massive, and I'm, I'm just – locked in and could not be focused on anything else at this point other than the national. So hard to believe it's already June halfway almost through 2022, um, just flying by. So it's, uh, it's crazy, but the national 100% what is on my mind at the moment. I'm not sure that'll change for the foreseeable future. We're hosting a card talk event at the national details to come. Shout to Ty. All right. I do want to talk about it. Because this might be where we get a little loose poo. Uh, big card going to auction. Mm. Backyard breaks hit the LeBron logo, man. When we were in Miami, uh, we were at dinner together when it happened. Mm-hmm. Card mm-hmm. was split three ways and is currently scheduled to run on golden auction. Did they sell it, split it three ways, and then someone else graded it? No, so got it, it got so gr- it's still so, theirs going all the way through the auction. Correct. To my understanding, that's I haven't heard differently, but that's my understanding. Understood. So, first question, I guess, is you know what do you think it's going to sell for? One million. <laughs> <laughs> no. I so badly want to say like one hundred seventy-six thousand dollars. I think a million is a fair number. But I just know that that's not going to happen because people protect downside against that. Um, a million. It's authentic. It's the worst card ever. Yeah, but it's authentic, though. It's so bad. And the it's the NBA logo, man, which you've never seen. And those are all definitely game-worn and, and real important LeBron games time. <laughs> It's so bad, but I got to say, everyone else thinks it's really bad, too. It's been the general consensus, which is, which why is a little I bit $176,000, but it's probably going to go for like $878,000. No way. Right. What do you think it's going to do? 4.852 million. If that card sells for 4.8 million, I'll freak out. We might cancel the podcast. <laughs> The show might be over if the show if the yeah. card sells for that much. Yeah, four point eight, five point two million, somewhere in there. It's an low specific low, number. Low like fives, you know, high fours, about. somewhere in there. Why? Why do you feel that way? Just out of curiosity. It's again, it just like you said, the hysteria around it. Like, uh, some of these guys just have more money than they know what to do with. Five million dollars is a lot to probably everybody that listens to this podcast and everybody I know. But five million dollars isn't a lot of money to Drake. Drake doesn't care. If Drake really Wait, wants no, it, no, 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 Lose Poos no. is coming. Lose Poos is coming. No, 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 no. Talk I'm about saying Drake if Drake really wants it, he, he's going to buy it. If, you know, LeBron wants it, he's going to buy it. Like, those Here's guys my just have... take. Drake has no interest in the card. Lose Poos coming soon. <laughs> All right, let's get into Lose Poos because I got to hear this. Like, Lou's just been hinting at this. Lou, what's, uh, what's the old Lose Poos this week? Lose Poos. You're telling me that this whole thing was created – conspiracy theorist i know nothing i'm just thinking out loud here with the car talk crew you're telling me that there was this whole big chase to get this car drake was like i want this car this is the only card i want blah 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 he spends all the money on brakes the Did card he? comes out so, well that's what you would think uh the card comes out and then it is going to a public auction how did that happen he didn't call up backyard breaks and offer them. VIP how do you not? To how does he not purchase that card? And give him a million bucks, I'll spec. Kind of weird that he didn't purchase the card. 
That's all. You don't think it's possible Drake still ends up with it post-auction? I, I Why does no, Drake no allow chance. it to get to auction? Unless he, unless it, he's getting advice that it's going to go for less than the whatever number is. 6.6, is that the crazy number that everyone's saying? I haven't, I haven't seen that. We six point six. Super wrong. I, I could be, be super. Dead. Yes, I could be dead wrong. I find it very weird. If it sells for four point, I'll be stunned, Ryan. Interesting. Are they court? Are they? I remember Drake and Ken are friends, and Ken's got a procession. So that's that's a Courtney. That's a fair point. Do you? Think I just that think that, that Drake that... was very smart. He got a lot of. Marketing from the whole chase of it. Yes. Now he's going to pay five million bucks to own the thing, and there's a lot of things that five million bucks gets you. That's. I hope it goes well. I'm just confused by the whole thing. I kind of. I just think it's like, yeah. And Tyler's just opening just aluminum packs all over the place. I. I... Oh, wow. We're doing another F1 my pack. I still have one. Yeah. So, okay. Official numbers. I think it sells for... Let's do this. Over, under a million. Ryan's over. Lou? I would be, like, right on that. So, I'm going to say over, but not by much. Okay. That's Courtney's crazy. over. Jay's over at 3.5. I am going to go under. Like, there's just no way. There, it, it, no, is the answer. There's no chance it sells for under a million dollars. Zero percent chance. Yeah, Could I think not it'll be go more short. That's Why protecting not? downside, Ty. There's under just no way, way. There's no chance it sells for that. It's also possible I'm getting stuck in the vocal minority thing where everyone's like, Why is this card over a million dollars? It can't be over a million dollars. And that's just people talking on Instagram. It, it but might go for $3.5 million. I don't see it. I'd just rather have like a million other cards at half the price. Now that's a different argument. I'm not arguing that. I'm just you're asking, hey, what will somebody with infinite amounts of money pay for this? Uh, millions. Who? I don't know who that person is. I don't know who has infinite amounts of money that is interested in modern day. I and guess, not I don't, like there's like four or five. I don't know about maybe. infinite amounts of money, right? Like I don't have access to everybody's bank, but. There's got to be some big players in the market that have interest in this card. Now, what they're willing to pay for it and what they what they value it at, I don't know. Shine, yeah. Nat Turner, Drake, like yeah. I, this. Ken Golden won it. Like, I, there's got to be a lot of people that have interest in this card that are major, major, major players in the card market. Yeah, yeah. yeah like like someone said, Rally Collectible. Like, do they want to buy it and fractional ownership it? Like, does Old have interest in it? Is PWCC like? There's got to be. There's got to be. Yeah. A, 10 to That's 15 fair. real players. That's that fair. The, the the fractional buying to list is fair. Yeah. I just don't know if they've three Drake bet a quarter of a million dollars that Drake London would be the first wide receiver off the board. Quarter of a million dollars. You think car. he cares about four million dollars? Right. No. Drake, How much money do you think Stake is paying him to put that bet in? Come on, like, right? Oh, sure. He's it's not his money. Yeah. I mean, you're not wrong, but like I know think, the move. You think Drake's I know not gambling moves. at all? You think Drake's got so much money and Drake's so gambling. much influence? He's not gambling one bit. Drake's like, yeah. Drake gambles. Save I think all. that for every time Drake posts a story of him on, he either has ownership in stake, sure. has a seven figure, six, has a seven figure, maybe eight, eight, figure. eight probably eight figure deal sure. with them. 100%. And I think he probably has some form of intense maybe referral or I don't even know, but I think maybe he has a credit line with them of sorts. Um, or he's just going ape shit crazy. Whatever this LeBron card will sell for. I bet Drake, I mean, Drake's gotta be gambling that kind of money you're on the wrong. regular. Like you're not wrong. Not on the regular 3.5 million bucks. It's a lot of money. Yeah. Like not daily, but a six month period. My man, Drake's probably betting $3 million. Depends if it's football season. He might get it. He Nicky might Minaj now has ownership in a sports gambling site. Max and that. What? All right. Interesting. Let's All put right, that up. Uh, when does it go again? But let's turn this little bit into a Twitter respond. We can do a little giveaway. Respond with 
what you think the card sells for. Tweet at Card Talk Pop what you think the card sells for. Price is right rules where you can't if it's over can't go over can't go over. Mm-hmm. And we will do. And we're only taking one entry per person. Don't don't mess yeah. around with the with the entries. We'll we'll do a uh, Jay's watching. We'll do a proper giveaway. We'll figure out what that is. Speaking of big high end cards, Mac Jones one one black prism. Mm. So crazy this sale. Sold. Just to be clear, they those uh. That father and son tandem do live in Ohio. Um, the people who pulled it, yeah, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> I saw like a meme. Was there like it was like the kid pulled it? And he's like, Dad, look what I pulled. And the dad was like, Look what we pulled. Yeah, <laughs> the meme, James. That's a smart move by dad. Yeah, I love that. Um, I haven't seen anything, I didn't see anything this weekend. Yeah, so it's sold for a, the again. There was a picture posted with the money. The rumor is it's sold for a hundred grand, and then the rumor is that the people that bought it were. Reportedly, had flipped it right away for 175k. Again, this is all hearsay, right? This is just hobby hearsay. Uh, but either way, looks like the sale was confirmed at a hundred thousand dollars for Mac Jones Prism 101. Oh. Now, this, Ty, this is where I feel the same way. I feel the same way about this card. You feel about the LeBron? Interesting. There's a million like for that price. I think there's a man. Let me. I'll, I'll look. I want to tell you this, Ty. But what were you saying? No, uh, I'm like, uh, it's it's funny that you see it that way because I'm like, ooh, hundred grand, hundred grand's a lot of money. So right now, a hundred, a hundred grand, yeah. essentially a hundred thousand dollars would buy you a fifty-two mantle PSA three on eBay. Would buy you a Brady. I think you could get a Brady Contenders BGS nine for right around that price. I think I think I saw one on Instagram yesterday for ninety thousand dollars. Tom Brady, you know, but you can't play the game one time, not play it another time, right? LeBron, uh, yeah, LeBron James. Those are game worn logo man. He's the game one. Of the one. Top, doesn't matter. They're Pre-season game worn. He's won four titles and went to nine straight NBA Finals and is one of the top two basketball players of all time. Mac Here's Jones hasn't won a playoff game. I'm with you. I'm just saying you can't play the game one time and not play. Absolutely, it there's time. a reason I would buy one card versus the other. One card has potential to have Fair real enough. value. One of them has nothing. Like, it's all speculation. What does 3.5 get you in Nicky Mantle? Probably like a PSA 6 or something, 7? Oh, it's yeah, it's got to be pretty high. Okay, so let's do that. I'm, I'm trying to look up. Yeah, but that's a fair comparison. All-time guys. Mac Jones has not won a playoff game. Not one. You're, yes, that's a good point. Good point. I agree. With may that. never. I take it all back. May never, exactly. You could never won. Joe Probably Flacco will won, never. Joe Flacco won a Super Bowl. Had one of the best postseason runs of all time on a way to a Super Bowl. And Thanks. you can buy his National Treasures RPAs for under $125. One my, A Super Bowl. It's my QB too. Stafford, Stafford, Matt Stafford, who I believe is a borderline Hall of Famer, right? He's right up there. You can buy his exquisite, his best true RPA, an exquisite patch auto out of 99 for under $2,500. Those guys are Super Bowl winning quarterbacks. They've actually done something. Herbert Burrow, Hurts, like all of these guys could actually, they could be amazing, right? If not, they hope to win a Super Bowl like Stafford just did. And you can buy his best card for freaking $2,500. It's crazy, man. It is crazy. so crazy. It's wild. It's very, very wild. Um, I don't know. Do you, but like, it's just something that can't be unwound, right? Because like, I think everyone globally agrees those prices are like, that's too high of a price. But how do you wind that back? I don't even know how to do that. I don't it's know the if it's same possible. thought, though. It, to me, it's the same thought as the LeBron. It's just there are people out there with that kind of money that are like, hey, if I lose $100,000 a Mac, lose $100,000. It's not affecting my bottom line. There's there's people with that kind of money, and it just – everybody wants to have the next guy before they're there, but they want their best, their best cards. So Prism Golds, Prism 101s, Contenders Championship tickets – or Super Bowl tickets – Contenders Cracked Ice, National Treasures Patch Autos, Flawless Patch Autos, NFL Shields, those kind of things. There's a lot of sports cards. There's only a few of those things, and there's a lot of people that have interest in those, and that's why I think the big stuff will continue to do well. Yeah, it's great. Like, I setting aside the Mac part, like, even I, I was dabbling a little bit trying to see what was happening with Zach stuff now that everything's starting to come out a little bit. It's just so expensive. I just can't do it. And Zach's nothing compared – like – Nothing compared to 
someone like some of these bigger guys and his prices are still too high. I just can't get there. The price. Yep. I, I, I just I, like Gretzky OPGs. <laughs> Me too. All right, let's, uh, grand, it, it looks like it was the last sale of a PSA nine. How Top much? 92. Gretzky 79 OPG. Yeah. Did what? PSA nine. Last sale did 111 K. So that or the Mac Jones. And it's graded at PSA nine. Yeah, I mean, it's like not even close. Top 92. Can I sidebar on hockey real quick or no? Yeah, sure. for sure. Gretzky and Biz are wildly <laughs> popular humans, and they're going to become a lot more popular. Biz looks crazy with that haircut. That thing's ridiculous. That's a ridiculous haircut. I'm missing I wonder, everything. Biz? Paul Bizonette? Oh. There's TNT with, gotcha. with Gretzky and them. Does that guy have cards, Rye? I feel like I would want to get a biz. No idea. I don't know. Time. I don't know enough about his his <laughs> cards. Uh, I was just thinking about Gretzky when he said that. And it came to Gretzky me. is the coolest. He's the smoothest. The guy. coolest, and dude just loves hockey. Loves hockey. Loves the game. His son in law just made 125 mil going to the Live Tour. By the way, I know people don't like when I talk about random things, but <laughs> the world of golf is being Exploded. shaken at its core. It's crazy what's going Who's on. Who's all right. gone? I saw Dustin Johnson. Uh, I saw Phil Mick. Phil. And now, like, I guess yesterday was, like, the first press conference, and there was, like, all types of drama and situational, and I don't know. It's getting it's getting wild because they're offering – The tour can't compete with the money. That's the no. problem. Correct. Interesting. And it's all about money at the end of the day. All right, let's uh, let's get into Facebook questions. Jay said we got a lot of them, so let's get into those. All right, so the first one is going to be from Darren. He says, going to my first national this year, how does PSA grading work at the show? I've heard you can get them graded and back at the end of the show. Is it is it at the highest price point, or do, how does that typically work? So the big thing is, is it's changed so much over the years. Right when the market mm-hmm. was on fire last year, it was probably different than it was five years ago when the market wasn't as crazy. I remember back in the day, you used to be able to like RCR cards with Beckett for eight or nine dollars and have them back in 48 hours right now. Just a whole different world. Um, yeah, there are definitely options. I'm sure PSA will have options to have cards graded at the show. Like that would be, that seems to be a given. I don't have any indication on their exact plans, but that seems to be like a, a, a strong possibility. But yeah, in terms of pricing, I I wouldn't have any any guess. Jay said it was last year. It was three hundred bucks for the end of the show. I cannot confirm or deny, but I believe Jay on that. So gives you yeah, some indication. That pricing, I think, was right. I think the main thing to keep in mind is if you're going to do it, you need to be there Wednesday, and you yeah, need to be sh- there when the doors open because the lines get crazy and they're the going to shut goes down up again. <laughs> yeah, not the price goes up. You just can't get the cards in. They're going to shut down again. They had to shut down last year to show for after a while because they got yeah. In the past, Beckett has like I know Beckett specifically has increased prices of RCR, and they would like on site grading. They would do like front of the line where you could pay like two x. I don't remember what it was. It was you could pay more pricing. Yeah, surge pricing to pay more (laughs) money to get it back sooner. Um, so I would imagine those are always in the cards for for grading companies as demand is likely going to be through the roof. There are people that will likely seek out the show to grade some of their cool stuff. Um. So, yeah, I'm, I'm sure PSA will, will announce more as the show gets closer. Tyler says, what are y'all opinions on PSA value opening back up through uh, up through only through group subs at 30? Does this really hurt SGC and CSG moving forward? Well, so the big thing is, is they're going to get past the PSA backlog. Um, PSA backlog is, is pretty, uh, I mean, we've got orders that are way, way old. Um, so getting through those is important, but I mean, if PSA gets thirty dollars, if thirty dollars subs, if those cards start coming back in four or five months, that it's going to be interesting, right? It's going to be interesting to see what some of these guys do at thirty bucks when you can grade with PSA and just wait two months longer, three months longer. Would you rather to do that or send to SGC slash CSG? Yeah, I saw CSG raise their price a little bit too, right? Twelve to fifteen, I think I saw. I didn't see that. Yeah, I think they raised their price a little bit. I don't know. I, it's just kind of – they feel like there's still so much – people don't have their cards from 2020 still from PSA. They're working on it. They're doing their best, all that stuff, totally. I don't think it'll be too much of a problem in the short term in terms of 
P, uh, SGC and CSG losing ground. We'll see how it goes long term. I want to see what happens. <clears throat> I would like to see how long these take to get back, all that good stuff, but um, nothing for now. Yeah. I think there's an insane amount of demand right now for graded cards. Yeah. Ian says, are you skeptical buying a card over 2K that's ungraded online? Which leads to, has it previously been graded and then cracked because of a bad grade? I mean, I think that's always a possibility, but with the way the market is now, there's a lot. I feel like there's a decent amount of cards that sell for over $2,000. Yeah. I don't go into it just assuming that any card over that price is like, well, it's not graded. It's got to be, you know, messed up. Um, yeah, I mean, to be honest, I, I look at it on like anything over 500 bucks. Like, hey, there's always a possibility that something might be damaged. I mean, but uh, it's not going to stop me from buying something. I mean, the opportunity to return it's pretty good now especially if it's like severely damaged. So I, you know, I wouldn't, wouldn't let that stop me from, from buying a big card online. Yeah. And I think it also, this speaks to, you know, you need to have a good reputation. People need to be able to trust you. You have, you can only trust the person you're working with and what they're saying. Unless you're buying on eBay. On eBay, of course you have the ultimate like return policy. You're fine. If it's not as described or whatever. Um, But if you're just buying person to person, the only thing you can ultimately do is trust what the person tells you and go from there. That's how it is with anything in cards. You could be buying a BGS nine that was previously a PSA six. Like that happens regularly enough. Yep, sure. What's the biggest raw card you've ever bought? Uh one of them was a Mahomes National Treasures RPA. Um I would have been August, July, June or July of 2020. And did you uh, grade it? No, the guy. I planned to keep it for a long time. Sold it 13 days later. Um, somebody wanted it more. <laughs> At a show or in the shop? L- yeah, locally. That was. Oh, I remember. That was the one you you traveled for, right? Yeah, I went to Philly. Yeah, out to Philly yeah, to see I a remember. buddy. Picked it up yeah. at a gas station parking lot. Um. Came wow, on, was like, oh, this is super cool. And someone's like, hey, you got him a Holmes NT? I'm like, yeah, I actually just got one. They're like, you want it? I'm like, oh, I don't really want to sell it. And hey, I'll give you this. And I'll make you an offer you can't refuse. And that's exactly what it was. And I was just in a position, I just, you know, the money was just too good to pass up. I did buy a card. I'll, I'll share more. I'll share more about it this week. Um, but one of the biggest cards I've ever bought raw, it kind of goes against like the whole, like, hey, buying the unproven guys. This is kind of like the. What I've sport wanted- is it? Football, yeah. I've wanted a. Uh, it's a Trevor Lawrence. I'll show more about it when it comes. Um, oh, it's, yeah. It's a. I just I wanted a a good size Trevor Lawrence cards. I like Trevor Lawrence. I don't need. Is it 50 a? Of them. Is it a recently released Trevor Lawrence card? I don't want to get into the details of what it is, but it's a. Uh, it's a cool card. It's a solid I'm a card. Chilly in here. Sorry, boys. Good. Fine. Yeah. All right, Kyle. Uh, Kyle asks. I don't have a storefront or set up a shows, so a dollar or five dollar box isn't really something I can do. Do you guys recommend to take all of my cheaper cards and selling them separately on eBay, time consuming and they don't sell well, or sell them as a huge bulk lot to an LCS? Ohioans do it better. better. Unbelievable. I think Com sees an option in these scenarios. Yeah, I think it, it's kind of a case by case, right? It's how long do you want to wait, right? Because if it's a time thing, Com sure. is not getting those done in six days. Yes, that's true. If it's a timing question, then yeah, you should just bring them to your local shop. They'll take what they take and you go from there. But Yeah, time is the biggest variable in this. Do you I, need the money in the next seven days? Do you want to sell, again, like are you preparing for the national where you want to do a little bit of selling every day, 30 minutes a day, get you one step closer? Do you want to wait four weeks, send them to Com C and try to maximize your money there and then play the process like the you know because comp is going to do all the work but they're going to take a percentage just like ebay does um but you're going to wait a month to get your money in your sales so just w- which option makes the most sense if you're like hey i need cash now sure lcs is selling at a card show those options exist right because you don't have to go to an lcs i i own one but you could wait till a show and go to a show um so i think there's a lot of different options but it typically comes down to a time thing like how quickly do you want the money and what are you willing to give up to get the money sooner 
those are typically the two things I would think. Would yeah. go through. I definitely don't think selling them one on one on eBay, one by one on eBay is a good idea. If they're lower value. I don't know. Price. I don't think that's, I don't think that's fair to say though. If somebody's trying to maximize their money, right. And they ha- have nothing but time 30 minutes a day, you're going to maximize your money. Right. I think everybody's situation is different. You're like, Hey, F it. I don't want to sit here and list all my cards. I'd rather take 15% less and just get out of them. I don't want to do the work, but if somebody, yeah, like, I guess that's true. If yeah, this is somebody's true. like, somebody's like, Hey, I need to pay my rent with this maximizing the money and you've got nothing but time that's it's a good opportunity for somebody to pay the rent with it fair enough i was just thinking of it in terms of like i think com c people go there for like the zero to to fifty dollar cards a lot hotter but maybe not i think that i was gonna go on a tangent but i won't do it it's tough i don't know you got to get to a show get to a show i think is the is the yeah or you and your homies can like split a table at a show and then you could do it that way that could work too this is a good question. Sean says, is Prism actually worth $1,300? I got lucky in my box, but do most people make money back on their boxes? This is a product that you buy expecting to break even on because it's so hot. I, so I completely disagree with the last statement. There's mm-hmm. no box I ever buy expecting to break even. I mean, 0% chance. I bought like, this scratch off expecting to win $1,000. Exactly. Yeah, because I bought yeah, a 50 Again, me. Sean, I don't mean, I'm not trying to smoke Sean. But no, yeah, because I bought a $50 scratch off, I should definitely be expecting to break even. Like it's 50, not a dollar. No chance. It is literally gambling. Yeah. Like playing in the high limit room at the casino doesn't increase your chances of winning more, like, more money, I don't believe. The second you walk into a casino, the chances are you're going to have less money than when you yes. walk out. There's not we a beat single the game in Miami that is. you play in a casino that has over fifty percent win rate. Yeah, I would like imagine the house one. is always the house is always favored. Correct. It's just like if you bet on sports long enough, you're probably going to lose. But those even those are li- are even different than. Sports. There's literally nothing you can do. It's yeah. It's more scratch off. It's I completely think the- luck of the draw. Whereas you kind of have decisions you can make in most casino games. Slots there isn't, but when you pull whatever. But like if you buy a box of cards, you should that- assume that you've in that money burn is the money back zero dollars coming back yeah to you. that that is your decision just like in a casino whether you want to play penny slots or two hundred fifty dollar a roll black or roulette. It's no different than do you want to buy a box of Sage or do you want to buy a box of Flawless, right? The decision is yours. There's different ends of the spectrum. I think the big thing why Prism is so hot is no different than why High Limit Room exists. The more you're willing to, you're willing to risk, the more you could pay off. Mm-hmm. The guy's going into the box of Prism that hit the Mac Jones 101. If that Mac Jones is a just a base card, that box is a whole lot different. They make no money. Instead, mm-hmm. they sold a sports card for $100,000. A hundred thousand dollars. That's that's crazy. A hundred thousand dollars for one sports card, right? Yeah. So that's that's the risk you take. The high risk, high reward. The the potential is there. The Trevor Lawrence one one will probably sell for near that. That's uh, sorry, I forgot that. That was my question going to be. That's not the most expect. Like the Trevor Lawrence one one should do. I think the Trevor Lawrence should do more than the Mac Jones. I, I, yeah, I, would I would hope so. Yeah, I would hope so. If Mac Jones is the highest selling card in 2021. If for this them, we came got out issues. in October when it was supposed to come out, Mac Jones would have sold for more. Uh, I don't know about that, but maybe they won a lot of games in a row. Mac Jones, Trevor was Lawrence is so it. is so go like, go well back to the after. season. Go back to the season. Look, you're at right. Season. No, you're 100 percent right Jones, about this. Uh, again, which one would you and I rather have is a different conversation than which one the market would rather yeah. have. I was I just as a little separate side point on this. We didn't get to it last time around, and we were talking about it in our original group chat a little bit. Um, and Heroes for Sale was actually the first person who actually said this, which brought it to my mind. Something has to get done about the SSPs and the and the non numbered like rare cards. Like there needs to be some sort of number attached to these things because these mangas that were going for however much mm-hmm. money, and then there's twelve more of them listed the next day is like a problem. Yeah, that seems like it's not going to end well. Those uh... there just has to be some sort of general area of how many there are. There just has to be. It's just not. It's not fair to people who think they're pulling something very, very rare out of a thirteen hundred dollar box, and they're searching for something to pull out of thirteen hundred dollar box. Yeah, it seems like it's. You know, I think about this like you would say out of twenty five is pretty rare, right? 
Yes. But if Super those cards rare. were if those cards were numbered to twenty five, they wouldn't sell for half of what they're selling for now. Fine, they shouldn't sell for that. Uh, again, I'm not I'm not arguing I'm not arguing against you. I'm just saying it's crazy what actually serial numbering those cards would do because I think if they were out of twenty five, they wouldn't sell nearly as well. But I think in the like the in totality, everyone would prefer that they were numbered to get a true value out of them rather it, than aligned. Rather I'm just saying I think the unknown the unknown right the uh, unknown of course adds to it it adds to it and it's crazy that that that's where it's at but we're like hey if it's out of 25 that would be pretty rare but it appears to be way more than 25 make it out of 10 make it out of 50 make parallels I don't care something needs that like, you can't have nothing because people are getting killed so all right next question Jay Layton like our boy Layton Pulled no, the tree lens? Different no. lane. Ridge Layton, one of the biggest breakers in the hobby. All right, Darren says, should the triple LeBron logo man have been graded authentic or just be left in its initial flawless case? This is a good question. I, I would have left it in the original flawless case. Me too. PSA 8 or higher, I'm pulling it out. PSA 7 or less, I'd keep it in the original case. I got to say something. <clears throat> I think that the answer to that question is why Mac Jones – card goes for a hundred grand and people like that's why people want to gamble on that and think the logo man's over the hill it's the same to me it's the exact same thing because if, I if it's saying. not in a psa slab well it might get something it might be an eight you don't know well guess what we know lebron's career we know what's happened now not that fun to gamble on we're all degenerates that's why people pay a hundred thousand for Mac Jones. What if Belichick rebuilds it? What if Mac Jones wins two Super Bowls? What if he becomes Mahomes? I mean, we're sitting here, Mahomes, and people are like, "Tough road ahead for Mahomes." They gave him all the money. Da, da, da. Meanwhile, Ryan Barry he could literally never older. win another playoff game again, and he's a Hall of Fame quarterback. Who? Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes. Yeah, I agree. Right. So the, I believe when you say you'd rather have it not slabbed. Versus PSA authentic to me, that's why Mac Jones one on one goes for a hundred grand because we're we hope that something might happen and the card's more valuable not in an authentic slab and ungraded because I, I think there's might. a little bit of a different sentiment in that I think the hope that Mac Jones might be good is the main reason that card sells. There's a 10% hope that, hey, this card could get a PSA 9 or 10 and add some significant value to it. But I don't think the guy spent spending $100,000 is like, oh, here's $100,000, fingers crossed. I hope this gets a 10. Like, that's if he not starts off 8-0, and o, it's up 20%. That has nothing to do with the grade, though. 8-0 and o is, is every reason. Mac Jones being good is the reason that card sells, not PSA giving it a 10 is the reason that card sells. You're talking about the LeBron being graded authentic doesn't add much value to the LeBron, but the the possibility that Mac could get a 10 adds value to the Mac. I'm saying the guy spending $100,000 is not buying it, praying that it gets a 10. He's not like, fingers crossed, but, please but get a he's 10. Pr- but what the card gets graded, it's still like, it's about potential upside. Agreed. 10% of the total card's value or the reason you buy the card is on the grade. 95, 90% of it is on Mac Jones being Tom Brady. Correct. I'm saying it doesn't matter nearly as much as you think on that card. It's being $100,000. If that card, you're not going to, I don't think that person's risking 100K with the Mac Jones having to be a 9 or 10. They're willing no. to buy for $100,000. I'm money. saying Mac Jones potentially being good and the LeBron Logan man potentially getting a PSA 8 is the same thing. He's relating the hope factor. That's what he's talking about. Not necessarily the... Yeah, I'm saying those two things are not most people. Most people, before they go away to a casino... Okay, myself, 31-year-old did male degenerate. I'd rather be on a Friday night heading to a casino than... Saturday morning, having won seven hundred fifty dollars at a casino. I'm um, we're so far down the rabbit hole. I'm beyond lost. Meaning, but, it's about the the potential. It's about the possibility of what it could be, which is why the LeBron logo man in its non graded state is a more interesting card than it being graded authentic. Which is why uh, Mac Jones at hundred k is interesting when I think they're two completely different they are two completely different plays. The Mac Jones is somebody that is looking to go into a casino and spend a lot of money and hope 
hope to whoever, God or whoever, that this card is going to be half a million dollars one day. That is one play. The other person is like Drake, Matt Turner, Shine, the group of hobby elite, right, that have big-time collections and are, right, like they're humongous players in the game. And they're like, hey, rather than have a U.S. dollar right now, I would rather have 3.5 million of my dollars, 5 million of my dollars in this LeBron card because there's a lot of people that want it and it has – safety built in that why LeBron would James you is- why would you rather have the card in a flawless case and not in a psa authentic it doesn't because it doesn't change the desire for the card nat turner in my but why opinion, would you rather have it? it it's a lebron logo man you it slabs authentic by the number one grading company sure let's go that way or in the original flawless holder makes no difference the desire for the card is still the exact same so why did you ask, why did you answer you'd rather have it in the flawless case? Personal preference. Just makes no rather... difference on the value of the card. So if you were the buyer, you'd break it out of the case? No, because it's not in the original flawless holder. If I could not put it in the original flawless holder, I would rather have it in a PSA holder. If I can't go back and undo what they already did, I'll keep it as is. But I'm saying I don't believe Drake's going to be like, you know what? It's not in the original holder. Not going to buy it. That's not what Drake's saying. Super Couldn't fair. disagree more. Super <laughs> I think uh, uh, the point I was making, I'll die on that hill. The I card think is di- worth more money are- in the original flawless holder because of what potentially could happen. No, changes no desire for the outcome of the card. Drake is not buying that saying, hope I can get a PSA 10 on this LeBron logo. So man. Drake said I got $3.5 million. I want to set on fire. Here we go. The reaction to it being in a PSA authentic slab versus in a PSA six isn't like of like a reality that's happening in the hobby right now. It's like people aren't PSA. like that's that sucks that the cards PSA authentic. No, look at Lewis Hamilton Chrome Autos. Sometimes cards are just not meant to be perfect, right? There are manufacturing defects. I think the hobby has come a long way, and not saying it's good or bad. It's just the way it is. The yeah. market has decided that, hey, damaged cards are acceptable. People are willing to buy PSA 7 first-year Topps Chrome cards. We would not be buying first-year – you know, we would I, not be buying Mac Jones PSA 7 Prisms, but we're willing to buy Charles Leclerc PSA 7 Autos. I do think that there's a difference between – having a PSA six versus I, th- I I think we've had this conversation before. I would almost rather have a PSA six or seven than a PSA authentic. And I think that's part of what Tyler's saying a little bit that we haven't gotten to yet. PSA six, PSA seven, PSA five potentially is better than PSA authentic. Ty is selling his argument on the upside of be- keeping that in the flawless case. That I believe could that get a PSA you would rather have it in the authentic value. flawless case. Because it's more valuable than in a PSA authentic slab. And the that's hundred percent true, Brian. And the reason being You're talking because, about the original flawless case? Yes. Yes. Oh, uh, uh, absolutely. I think in if you're ranking them, it's worth the, more the that rank way. is there. It's not a million dollar rank, it's a hundred fifty thousand. I'm just a, saying they're the same thing on different scales. The, what the do you card mean? be like we're degenerates. <laughs> we're it like the the card is more valuable without knowing that it went to PSA than it is before, which is similar because that's just out of your hands. Just like Mac Jones being good, completely out of your hands. That's why people pay up for those things. When we're like, we play the game of, okay, well, why not spend a hundred thousand dollars on Anton Senna or like all these people that have accomplished these amazing things. Go buy a Serena Williams auto for a hundred grand rather than a Mac Jones one of one. But the majority of people in this hobby, I would say, are looking for investment. They're very high risk individuals. If you're spending a hundred grand on on a ungraded sports card, you're at least have an allocation of capital that is very high risk. Mm-hmm. That's why that card is interesting, more so than a mantle three. Now, you and I you're and comparing little, the LeBron S. You, you're comparing no, I'm not LeBron comparing any of the cards. I'm just comparing the mindset of most people in the hobby and why I think that the logo man being in its original flawless case is more interesting to most people than in a PSA authentic. It's like, it's like Christmas morning versus Christmas Eve. I'd rather be Christmas Eve because you have to look forward to it. 
I can get behind that argument in terms of like, I would rather have it in there again with the possibility it could grade well. And I still have that as a play. I just don't believe it, it, it has any effect on the, the final sale price. Interesting. It just, it just doesn't like if uh, look at some of the cards that Nat Turner has graded on his page, right? Like look at Nat Turner's page. Mm -hmm. He owns like some of the major triple logo men in the hobby from LeBron's like from early LeBron years, like the LeBron, Kobe, Jordan, triple logo man. Like he mm -hmm. owns a lot of those big cards. Some of them have PSA seven. Some of it, like, I know he's got one nine. I would love to pull this up. How many PSA got... authentics does he have? Well, I guess let's find out. I mean, it's not going to be easy to find. I'm scrolling. The answer oh, is not a lot based on what I, I see one. Gonna be good. I count one. I, I'm scrolling for like 15 Mahomes seconds. Mahomes National Treasures, PSA seven. Seven, not authentic. That's different. That's what we're saying. Jordan, here you go. Jordan Epic Signatures Auto at a 23. PSA yeah. Authentic. Yeah. Very few. I've got to find those triple. I don't think it's that high. I think, well, yeah, the, well, yeah. I think we're all on the same page here. Yes. We, yes. we, 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 I, I was trying We've to really, like come really pull the a couple of topics in, and there's a question that I really want to answer. Um, but, yeah, I just think that it was a collective – let down when people saw it as authentic because there's no more. Oh, what if it gets an eight? What if it gets a nine? What would happen then? Yeah. Zipper. Show yeah. That, that might take some of the, you know, shine off of it. I just now not for great investors that are playing a super long-term game and it's, but the majority of us are degenerates chasing something, which yeah. is why people are let down that it's an authentic. Even if it was an eight, people would be let down. Wow, it's not a nine. Yeah. We got to get out of this conversation. All right, let's move on. Let's Christopher Amstrup, why is Ty not coming to Denmark for the grand depart of Tour de France? I'm sure we can arrange a stroll in and around Rockskilde where the two stages takes off. How which did you also happened. I probably pronounced it wrong. Rockskilde. Oh, okay. I thought, Roskilde. You, Roskilde. thought you had it right. Rockskilde. No, nah, my Danish is in the gutter uh which also happens to be k mag's hometown <sighs> there's a lot of reasons unfortunately first i don't have unlimited money uh second it's tough to plan a large family trip third i actually may end up being there because i think i'm supposed to go to the south of france for a week at the end of june and then maybe skirt over to denmark um, I'm going to the south of France. Okay, oh, yeah, uh, but we'll see. It's a great, I, Christopher. I need to. We need to hang and get to know each other. I'm just excited about that because I'm coming to Denmark and we're gonna hang. Feels like you're all in right. Denmark we got to make up some time. We do. Hopefully, Ty can get to Denmark, but we've got to get to play of the week. Shout out to uh, Jay for the reminder. What do you guys think about PSA Authentics? <laughs> <laughs> I hope there's a PSA Authentic play this week. That would just be too good. You know what that else is in uh, Roskilde? The Viking Ship Museum. That's cool. Fun fact of the day. All right, Jay, play of the week. Let's get into it. All right, so the first one. You know what we should do? Somebody should reach out to some of these. Big, like, Jay, can we DM Drake? Ask which one Drake would rather have, PSA Authentic <laughs> or an original Flawless Case? Jay, can you DM Drake? <laughs> Just DM Drake. God, God, God. You hey, Drake, I actually think quick question for card would, talk would deliver on that. <laughs> Can someone get, I mean, get <laughs> hey, somebody Drake. to get a hold of Drake? All right, play of the week. This one is from the Church of Cars on IG. Hey guys, Dan Church here from the UK, and here's my play of the week. Keeping it simple this week, hopefully, this, this one shows that a longer hold and a bit of patience on the right player is a good play. I purchased this Phil Foden Donner silver die cut out of 100 from 2019-2020 Donner soccer somehow for about 25 euros in November of 2020. This was about eight to nine months into my journey with cards, and I had figured that numbered parallels were the way to go. I was toying with the idea of sending for grading. However, knew that this was always going to be a risky, risky play with die cut cards. With the World Cup coming up and City just winning the league, I had it on eBay for about 300 euros by it now, and just last week accepted an offer for 275. I know that I've may have been able to make more if England did well in the tournament. However, I made money on it and it's time to move on. Thanks as always for the great content. Looking forward to having you guys over here soon. P.S. My NFL team has been the Bengals for many years, so I'm hoping that this makes me an honorary Ohio State resident. Take care. 
What to go? Yeah, Dan, congrats on liking one of the 14 teams that Ryan cheers for in the NFL. No, I think he was just trying to say that he's an Ohio I know, guy. I'm joking. Totally joking. The I Bengals get- are like our squad, led by Ryan. But the. If it- <laughs> I will never. I'm never going to say that. Listen, they were fun for us in the playoffs. Which they is were. They, we, we, we were early on the train, but it's officially war times. So that's probably been the most we've ever agreed on a on a football yeah, team. A hundred percent. That we will probably the be game. the most we ever. Agreed we saw on. the Raider game, and we knew. Yeah, I mean, like we're never going to agree on college football ever. Not one time. I mean, nothing to argue with. One person has the best team in the country. Everyone else is just competing to be there. I just love it how I don't get the same respect in terms of like switching teams but as you do right like you've clearly been a michigan guy if we go back and we pull the tape from early episodes lose all in on like that team up north and then they lose 13 years in a row and then george is like hey we're gonna be good this year because my sister's going there shout out to them go dogs i just like it's like kind of like an odd vibe that's just a family commitment sorry for being committed to family mm, yeah i just has no, you know your sister has nothing to do with the football team credit to, well that's true, but credit to me for also stepping away from Michigan the year they became good. Some would say I was it was like a good luck Chuck situation. I walk away, they become good. Listen, yeah, the Church right. of well, Cards submitted a big time play <laughs> and a big time player, and here we are. Ty, we're waiting on your soccer input. You know, yeah, that's yeah. A good point. I think it's I a great play. I, uh, there's a lot of things about this. I love this set. I grew up on this set. This set made me who I am today. But Phil Foden's a gangster. He is going to have a long and fruitful career in front of him. I I like die cuts, personally. Obviously, they are hard to, hard to grade, but I think it's a proper flip. I think timing is interesting because I think he's got a big six months, 18 months ahead of him. But keep him moving in and out, in and out, in and out. I think the other time you'd sell it is in the winter around World Cup. Or you're waiting a couple years, so I like right. to, I like to play church proper of play. There's some patience there. Ty says proper play from proper football. Correct. All right, next play. All right, so this is from DMS ninety eight, long time listener, first time caller. I gotta blow this up. I can't see this. All right, uh, first off, I'm from the great state of Vermont, so Lou doesn't have to stress. Here's my submission state. for play of the week. I recently bought a lot that consisted of a couple boxes of cards and some old binders I found on Facebook Marketplace. I saw some 98 football and figured it was worth the 50 bucks without looking too hard. After going through and not finding a Manning rookie or a Moss rookie, I was kind of bummed. I did find a nice Jordan Z4 sensor and a Shaq rookie, but then I found a diamond in the rough. As I was going through some loose cards and one of the cardboard boxes, I found a bunch of 1996 Sports Illustrated for Kids cutout cards. Flipped through and found the Tiger Woods rookie. After doing some research and seeing how well they sell raw and what low-graded versions sell for, I decided to sub it with SGC to add some value. Came back a four, and I recently sold it at a local car show for $400 cash. Turned a $50 buy and $25 grading <coughs> into $325 profit, and I still have a couple of the other cool cards from the lot. Love it. Vermont's a wonderful place. Um, shout out Killington. Uh, big fan of this play. Love the idea of grading up Tiger, even though it's low grade. There's some extra research that went into that on Darren's end. It's like doesn't have to be an eight or a nine per our conversation earlier. Even the fours and fives do really well too. So I'm pumped about that. It's good work. Yeah, I love that. There's a uh, you know, there's grading, card show, there's Facebook Marketplace. I mean, got the whole uh, mm-hmm. whole run of the the hobby here. Not messing around. Very cool. All right, next play. Tiger, Tiger, Tiger Woods, y'all. You think Tiger Woods is, goes is uh, more valuable or less if the PJ Tour collapses? Irrelevant. Interesting. Okay. Tiger's on the back end of his career. What Tiger's already accomplished is, you know, where does they offer him? A, a... Yeah, but if he doesn't get the chance to pass Jack, that's kind of going to ruin it a little bit. No. Mm. Mm. He's already won so many. Fair. If LeBron retires tomorrow, doesn't pass Jordan for finals, any impact on LeBron's career? Hmm. Fair point. I'm really excited about Jackson's submission. All right, Jax underscore card 77. What's up, guys? My name is Jackson, and I'm 12 years old. Love listening to the pod and decided to submit a player of the week. 
My dad and I have enjoyed looking through value boxes since our first big show, which was the national in 2019. Even though Ryan always gives me a hard time about my Michigan backpack, I love the videos on finding the good stuff in value boxes and have learned a lot. At the most recent Dallas show, we spent the whole day digging and found a pair of sneaky plays. We found the Obi top and clearly Donner's rookie mosaic gold in a Derrick Rose Spectra lucky envelope out of eight. We got the pair for $10. I knew the top end was rare and found out that it was a case hit. And the Rose was also jersey numbered four of eight. Love a good jersey number play. Got home and looked at some comps and listed the top end for 150 or best offer and got an offer 10 minutes later for 110. Countered at 125 and settled at 115. Listed the Rose in a five day auction starting at a buck and quickly got an offer for 50, which I declined, hoping it would bring more since it's jersey numbered. The Rose ended up selling for $80. After fees, the $10 pair made us $155. An easy flip, which we'll be taking to the National next month. Hope to see you guys there. Keep up the great work. Jackson, wrap it up. Just just, just wrap it up. Wrap it up. Absolutely. I, I will give it to a Michigan fan on this one. Uh, see these guys every time we go to Dallas. Been to quite a few Dallas. Uh, you know, quite a few Dallas shows. They're there every time. Always rocking the Michigan book bag. Every time I'm asked, I ask, hey, can I buy the shirt you wear to the show? I'll, you know, I'll pay sponsorship rights for that. Just anything but the Michigan um, won't won't do it. But uh, good kid, I got a business card from him last time. Sticker, I mean, value box plays, jersey numbers. I mean, the only thing that this thing has that I don't like is Michigan. Other than that, like, I mean, this is this is a plus, right? Twelve years old, flipping, making one hundred and fifty five bucks, doing a little bit of work, taking it to the national, gonna flip it some more. Like, this is. This is, I see 12 year old Ryan here. This is fantastic. A plus. Yeah, I love this so much. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to apologize to Jackson's dad for all the cursing we do. I hope that's not too bad. Um, we've gotten better. We have gotten better, but also we've gotten worse at the same time. So big fan. We definitely curse. You curse a lot more, Ryan. What? Jay, pull the tape. Was When's like a the last time we week clicked? window that we were really firing them off. And yes. We, we toned we've it dialed down. it back. Yeah, Fair not point. one this, not one today. Not one today, yeah. I, I was just saying I was trying to be respectful to Jackson's dad. Serious question. Serious question. We got to get a shot in at Jay. Which happens more, we curse or Jay makes mistakes on play of the week? Cursing for sure. That is so mean. Cursing for sure. <laughs> Ty, hey, you heard the man. That you heard mean. him. <gasps> he went <gasps> weeks without a mistake. How dare you? Seven mistakes a lifetime of me. Come on. I don't know if we That's said more than seven crazy. curse words. She had seven curse words to Tyler like three weeks ago in one episode. Great play. I love this play. I'm anyway, totally joking. Ty, any it. thoughts on my man Jackson? Uh, I love Obi Toppin. Um, I like it. I mean, I like it because he's 12 years old. Yeah, that's all time. All time play. And I like that his father takes him to shows. And I also like that Ryan gives him a hard time for wearing a Michigan backpack, yet he perseveres through because that's what true fans do, even though when their mentors and idols tell them that they're lame. Um, yeah. Dollar Ty, box, think- value box flips with the pops is memories of a lifetime, and I'm super into it. I also am wondering who designed Jackson's uh, – PSP, yeah. and I also love Instagram handles that are underscore cards. Yep. Historically, we're pro those accounts. Yeah. Yeah. So go next. Last last play. Do you think they should have taken Tyrese Halliburton over Obi Toppin? Just asking. It like the Knicks got a lot of young guys. Ty is Obi Toppin part of their plans? Like, it's got to be somebody's got to be odd man out here soon. I don't know if I even want. Our boy from the Jazz. You don't want Donovan Mitchell on the team? I don't know. <laughs> I think we are so inept. You better hope the Rangers win, brother. It might be a while. I know. I'm oh, here come the Jets. But like, here come the Jets. <laughs> I'll, I'll say this. That's hilarious. That's a good a, joke. A New York sports team is two wins away from this from a championship round, which is – Super cool. And right, do, you want, do you want to know something? Oh, sorry. I think the Knicks are super far away from competing yeah. in yeah. a meaningful playoff game. The Rangers are, I mean, obviously for obvious reasons, but the Rangers have, even if you go into next year, the Rangers got to be one of the 
I mean, the best hope for, I mean, the Yankees got to be up there. <laughs> <laughs> There's Lou's joke. <laughs> I love it. I, Lou hates the Yankees. Just they suck. I'm just, they're not Keep going. Anything. Keep going. Last right. play. Last play. All right. Next play. <laughs> oh. Yikes. Wow. All right. Western NY underscore sports cards. Hey, guys. Huge fan of the show and figured it was finally time to spend my play. Recently, I was put in contact with someone looking to sell a memorabilia collection. I drove three hours to find an amazing array of hockey memorabilia, pictures, jerseys, etc., which I purchased it all for a thousand bucks. This alone could be a play as all I've been able to already resell close to $3,000. However, thanks to countless YouTube videos and studying all in the sports hobby, I was able to recognize a card sitting on the desk that looked important. This card was raw without even a penny sleeve and had visible dust on it. After doing my research, I discovered this card was a 1952 Jackie Robinson Tops card. After getting home, I immediately sent this card Super Express to PSA, getting it back as a 1.5 just two weeks ago. Yesterday, I accepted an offer for $5,500 cash, bringing my total profit on this $1,000 memorabilia collection up to close up close to 7,500. Really shows even if you collect one sport, knowing the hobby and studying all sports can pay off big time. Very cool. It's a good looking one five. That is a really good looking one five. It's a little bit off, but it's, it's yeah, a, a little really bit off center, card. but that's got some good color. I would love to know what the hockey, the hockey memorabilia was. I if that was me play the week on its own, I would love to know what that was. But this is incredible. Do you see Gretzky's yeah, yeah um, the jersey. jersey jersey final Oilers jersey just sold for like one point two five? Yeah, crazy. Which is crazy because the what did the Brady ball sell for? Five hundred, right? For just a ball. Yo, Gretzky's the boy. I'm telling you. The I'm boy. Just saying it's just crazy that like a Brady ball, like a ball from his final touchdown pass sold for half of that. I realize it obviously the sale was null and void or whatever, like because of Brady came back. But that's crazy. Yo, Gretzky's that dude. Yeah. Um, great play. Good recognition. I think it's funny that there was a Jackie Robinson just sitting there with no sleeve with dust on it. That's like it's classic cool. cards. Classic yeah. cards. Um, and there's a lot more of that to be found. Yeah, like yeah. I said, I would love to know, like Lou's point, what else is in the thousand dollar jersey auto memorabilia collection? Like, it made almost three thousand bucks. Stuff. That's pretty good. It's got to be some cool stuff. Some or good stuff, I would fun. imagine. Yeah. All right, Jay, is that it? I think there's one more. He said, mm-hmm. "Is that it, Jay?" One oh, more. Okay. All right, so Mister Wine Leaf. A while ago, I noticed the SM247 promo Charizard Rashiram going for a decent amount in a PSA 10. I bought three nice copies of the card on the local equivalent of eBay for about 20 US dollars each. Sent them into a local grading company to get graded, which cost around 13 US dollars per card. I ended up getting one 10 and two nines. I sold the 10 for 200 USD and the one of the nines for 35 USD. Decided to keep the last one for my kid's PC. After grading cost fees, I ended up with around 130 USD profit and a new card for the kid and a new card for my kid. Not a huge play, but I thought that I would give a little insight in how it can be done over here in Sweden without having to send the cards all the way over to the US to get graded. See picks to verify 10 SEK equals one USD. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome. That's just actually I always, really cool. I always wonder how it works internationally because PSA expanded their international stuff a little bit, but not that much. It's still a lot of work. So I always wonder how that goes. Yeah, Smart, that's pretty cool. Easy. About as easy as it gets. All things I considered. don't remember very many international Wait. plays. I think this is our first time ever having international plays. And we have two. We had two in one show. It's a good job. I mean, we got it. We got to give some credit to the, one of the all time plays though. Hannah found a international auction house and, yeah, that was wild. Like I mean, that's one. Random... That's a that's a Hall of Fame type play. Still yeah. can't believe that happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was wild. All great plays. There's actually some really good ones this week, but um, sold. Yeah, um, Jackson. I think it's Jackson. Keep going back though. Mm. Some really good plays. Yeah, it's Jackson for sure. Mine's the Foden. Yours is the Foden. Yeah, I but I lose it. two to one. I'm hard committed to Jackson. I love yeah. it. Could Punk. not be more sure. No cursing on the Instagram group, everybody. Focus up. Lock it in. Everybody be nice. <laughs> what a uh, what a great play. Awesome. Hopefully next time we see him, we can give him like a card talk shirt. I mean, even if it's not like Ohio State or Card Collector 2, maybe we'll just yeah, get him we like got a card talk shirt. Like 
you know, maybe Jay, can we make him one like that says like I won play of the week on Car Talk? Like let's just get him that and just let him wear that instead. Maybe a Car Talk <laughs> book bag. Just anything that's not Michigan, and like I would be like locked in on on that for sure. Yep. Yep. All right. Latest launch. We have a couple things this week. We have a pretty solid basketball product release. Lou, I would love to know where you'd rank this. <clears throat> Noir. Noir basketball. Has the sneaker oh, spotlight autos. One. Has the sneaker spotlight autos. Um, little pricey, currently around twenty three hundred a box. Um twenty three, yeah, twenty three, twenty four hundred a box. Uh, you've got that this week. You've got Tops Series Two baseball coming out, and you have Obsidian football. So a couple, couple decent releases. Solid release week, some might say. Some might say Noir sneaky one of the nicest cards that comes out every year, in my it's, opinion. Those sneaker, yeah. the mixture of hobbies has always done well in the hobby. Marvels with comics and cards. Sneaker, sneaker spotlight with sneakers and cards like those two like the mixing of hobbies has seemed to uh has seemed to done have done pretty well historically in the hobby for the most part yeah big fan so. it's baseball series two though i think they're not there's like basically no big rookies last night heard. there's not big names again i don't know baseball as well i do see wander on the checklist but no he's in series yeah, one but he's in series one yeah i know o'neill o'neill cruz is in it for the pirates but i haven't seen a lot of names I have heard that update will be loaded because of the lack of names in series two, but like no one Gorman's up now. He should, well, it's probably too close for that, but he should be an update for sure. Cool. Ty, anything, any uh, closing thoughts? We're an out. We're back to back episodes. This has got to be a a milestone for car talk. I don't know the last time we went over an hour and 10 minutes in back to back episodes. Yeah. It's been a while. It's been a long time. Um, we got some not, stuff coming to the national. Yes, some, ex, some new exclusive cards. Yes, we'll preview those here soon. I think you guys yes. will get a kick out of those. Jay and his team did a heck of a job on those. Yes, those are super cool. I also wanted to mention something that was uh, an embarrassing story for me, but made me really happy, and I think you're going to laugh at it, Ryan. Um, mm-hmm. Mark Sanchez is back with the Jets. Like he's just at OTAs hanging out, and it just makes me so happy. It just brought me so much joy yesterday seeing him on the field, like talking to the owner, hanging out. I just love it. I'm so ready for football season. It's insane. There are very few cards or of people I see now that I'm like, hey, this goes here. But I assure you, if I see a Mark Sanchez card, it's like we're locked I in love on that. that. Guy. Um, I love that guy. I gave My you quarterback. You got the, what the NT from me? Yeah, the shield. Huge. I mean, card. one of his best cards ever. Huge card. I mean, could you imagine what that card would have sold for pre butt fumble? I mean, just before everything just went downhill. That was unnecessary. We we're having a nice positive moment, and you just ruined it. Yeah, I just hate to see that. Tough. Good show, everybody. Big game tonight. Big game yeah. tonight for the Rangers. We'll find out tomorrow if the Rangers are up three one, or if it's tied going back to the Garden. See you guys next week. Peace. Peace.